I'm going to teach you this screen replacement technique in Adobe Premiere. If you're just starting out editing and you want to enhance your visual effects skills, this video is for you. By the end of this video, you're going to know how to track objects and screen replace using just Adobe Premiere and the Mocha Pro plugin. If you don't have Mocha Pro, then check the link in the description. You get 15% off this powerful plugin. Let me show you how it works. So I'm going to start off by dragging my clip into a new sequence. I'm going to trim this down to about five seconds. And I have my clip here of a navigation screen just from an iPhone. I'm going to bring this in and I'm going to trim this down as well. I don't need my audio layer, so I'll remove that. Then in my navigation screen, I'm going to go to my effect controls and I'm going to scale it down. And I'm just going to try to make this the proportions of the phone as close as I can. So I really don't see any green and you'll see why later on. And that looks pretty good. So now, so if I go to my first frame, I have this in a perfect spot. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my navigation layer. I'm going to right click on my clip and I'm going to go to nest and I'm going to nest this. I'll just label this overlay and I'm actually going to bring this underneath my source layer and you'll see why later on. So now I'm going to search for the Mocha Pro effect in my effects and I'm going to drag this onto my source video. And in effect controls, you'll see the Mocha Pro plugin. I'm just going to click on the Mocha icon and then Mocha is going to start up and don't be overwhelmed with all the controls. Just take it one piece at a time. So you see, I have my clip here. This is a little timeline down here and I'm going to use the X spline tool. You could click on command L or you could just use this little pen and then X icon. Okay, so now I'm just gonna outline by clicking multiple points and I'm just gonna try to roughly mask this phone. So the outline of the case obviously doesn't have to be completely perfect, but the object is to track the object. So then to let go of my mask, I'm just going to right click and it's gonna release it. So from here, I'm just gonna track. So I'm gonna to go to my essentials panel down below you can see the track motion options. You have transform, scale, rotate, skew, and perspective. Perspective isn't enabled because this is if my subject was kind of turning the phone almost in 3D space and you want to change the perspective of it. But this clip, he's just holding it at a planar surface, kind of flat to the camera. So I don't need to enable this. So I'm just going to track forward. So I'm going to do the track forward triangle. If I was at the end of my sequence, I could track backwards but I'm at the beginning of my sequence, so I'm going to track forward. And we don't need to watch all this, so I'll fast forward this. Okay, you see that tracked very, very well, and that's the beauty of Mocha Pro. So now I'm going to, first with my layer selected, then I'm gonna click on Show Surface. And you see this blue box pops up. This is where it's basically going to superimpose your layer. So if I go to Align Surface, if I click on that, it's, you see the box changes to the actual composition parameters. I'm going to use that because I nested my overlay. So the overlay became vertical and I nested it so it became a 16 by 9. If your object wasn't 16 by 9, if it was a different parameter, you would uh, adjust the surface manually. But because I did that, all I had to do was click that and then I'm good to go. So now if I go into my layer properties under insert clip, I'm going to select insert layer and you see nothing happens, but you'll see when we get back to premiere, what that does. So now if I go to view and I go to parameters and I go to the insert panel, I'm just going to enable motion blur. So whatever I overlay has that little bit of motion blur as these, as it's moving and transforming, and it just really sells the effect and it makes it look more realistic. And from here, I'm just going to hit the little save icon right up here. And I'm just going to close out of Mocha Pro. And then back into Premiere Pro, if I drop down in my Mocha Pro 
effect. If I drop down my module renders, I can click the render checkbox. And then under module, I could do insert composite. And then under insert layer, I'm going to do layer one. And you can see it pops up. And you can see it's tracking really, really well. But why doesn't this go underneath the phone? Well, there's a couple other things we have to do. I can go back into my mocha panel. So then if I go to module, if I'm changing this to insert cutout and I hide my bottom layer because it just duplicates it, you can see you got all the motion and you have the layer by itself. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my clip and I'm gonna hold the option key and I'm just gonna bring another version of this clip up to layer three. So clicking on layer three, I'm gonna remove my Mocha Pro effect and this is just gonna bring it back to a normal layer. And I'm gonna go back into my effects panel and I'm going to select the ultra key effect, drag this onto my top layer and ultra key. So under key color, I'm gonna click the eyedropper and I'm gonna select the green. It does what it's supposed to. And then if I wanted to, I could actually scale and adjust my layer underneath if I want to make it a little bit smaller make it more centered it's done a really really good job tracking this and I'm just gonna add a little bit of compositing techniques to it to just sell the effect that much more so I'm gonna go back into my project panel and I'm gonna click new item adjustment layer and underneath my top layer I'm gonna search for Venetian blinds effect. Bring that on my adjustment layer. If I just play around with the parameters here, I get super close. You could see it almost looks like pixels. That's kind of what we want. So I have these settings, these look good. I have it just at 4%. I'm not gonna animate it. I'm just gonna leave it like that. Then I'm gonna copy this and add another effect and under direction, I'm gonna make this 90 degrees. You can see it just makes it a square. So you got one vertical, one horizontal, and after a little bit of color correction, here's our final result.